You and I forever this morning. Thanks to everybody for the great support. We're reading out the messages very, very soon. Why Jackals? Why are we talking about uh, Jackals this morning? I think it's always important to talk about Jackals. Jackals are those characters you meet in your life who smile, pretend they like you, pretend they're on your side, only for you to find at the end of the day that um, they're actually the ones who disappoint, stab you in the back, <laughs> betray. So it was just a song where I was noticing what happens in society. And the funny thing about it is that the people who turn out to be the jackals are actually those closest to you. Uh, relatives, family, people you think you can trust. But at the end of the day, you find out that they have their own hidden agendas and they don't feel as strongly for you as you might about them. So it applies to family, it applies to friends, anyone you think you can believe in or trust. Uh, so I can also be a jackal as well. <laughs> no, I, I would hope not with you, Carlton. You seem like a very nice guy. <laughs> All right, uh, nice, great stuff indeed. I've got to lie. Uh, now, introduce yourself. Okay. Who are you? All right, Carlton. My name is Tendai Mflanga. I am a young man based in Harare, born and bred in Harare. I'm a musician. I sing, I play the guitar, I play the piano, I compose and love to make music. So, in a nutshell, that's who I am today. What kind of music? I call my brand of music Afrofusion. I know that there are lots of genre, mm, types of music these days called Afrofusion, but in my in my own way, I try to bring something to the table that's different. As an African, I'm very inspired by African music, but I try to put my own unique spin on it. You also say you play the guitar. Yes. The bass guitar, the lead guitar? I play lead and acoustic. So you, would you call yourself the guitar man? There's only one guitar man as far as I know, and that's you. Yeah, we're going to stop the interview. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Nice one. Okay. All right. Um, we played you, we played uh, Jaco. Nice, lovely. Very different kind of music, very mature. I like you with your voice. Fantastic, eh? Thank you. The next piece is called Africa. Why are we talking about Africa? I think it's important for us as a people to have our own identity, to own it, to be proud of it, and to be aware of what is happening in our continent. A lot of the things that are happening are not things which would make us happy, but they come, in my own estimation, from not having a sense of who we are, from not loving ourselves. There's a real streak of self-hate that one may say has been programmed within us, but one that we have perpetuated from generation to generation. And until we learn to love ourselves, it will be very difficult for us to reach our full potential. You and I forever this morning. It's a lovely, lovely Saturday. And uh, today, um, let's talk about uh, Standor and be honest about it. Tell me, what is this all about? <laughs> okay, Standwa mm -hmm. is a love song. Yep. It is an ode to love and it is a, um, you might say a dedication to a special lady at the time that I wrote the song. Mm -hmm. It was an expression of um, how I felt when I was around her, with her, near her. So this was my way of musically expressing how that felt. This is your first offering, this whole set that we're playing this, uh, this morning. This is your first offering? Yes, it is. This is All this music is from my first album. So how many pieces are on this album? Uh, the total number of tracks is nine. Did you work them all yourself? Yes, I did indeed. But who inspired you? What inspired you? Who inspired you? What inspired you? Growing up, I was inspired heavily by my parents. They always encourage me to be the best that I can be. Musically, I was inspired by my father. My, Who's your father? My father is Ike Mifanga, Isaac Mifanga. He himself is an engineer, a musician, himself a producer oh. of music. Oh, nice. nice. I was inspired by my sister, a great musical talent herself, Notando. Mm -hmm. 
I was inspired by, as I said, my parents, which includes my mother, who has a very good traditional drummer herself, a lovely human being. Inspired by my younger brother, Tavani, his tenacity and force in life is something that I admire and try to inculcate myself. But moving towards a more traditional musical influences, besides my father and my sister, I'm also inspired by African giants, in my opinion, people like Salif Keita, people like Yuma Sekela, people like Oliver Mkukuzi, people like Dobenya Ore and Angelique Kijo. These are the people who inspired me if we're talking about the continent of Africa. Beyond that, there are very good Western musicians who've inspired me, people like Seal, people like the Lighthouse family, people like... Um, Sorry, did you say the Lighthouse family? Yes, I did. Are you very sure about the Lighthouse family? Yeah, very, very sure. Okay, let's carry on. Okay. Um, I also listen to a lot of instrumental music as well, so I'm inspired by guys like George Benson, Earl Clue. Uh, I really love also, I listen to rock, so guys like Eric Johnson, Jimi Hendrix. These Jimi guys. Hendrix. Yes, Jimi Hendrix. Interesting. These guys all, they all had an influence on how I listen to and perceive music. This is why I call my music an Afrofusion, because I feel like all of these things meld together in my subconscious and it forms this melting pot of a style I call Afrofusion. Very interesting. I'm just looking at your age here and I'm also looking at the fact that you listen to the Lighthouse family, you appreciate the Lighthouse family, and you appreciate um, Jimi Hendrix, and George Benson. It's so, amazing. Um, yeah. You know, the good thing about it is that you also like the Lighthouse family. <laughs> I hope you didn't, um, you know, appreciate the Lighthouse family because of it. Well, it's a good song. I love that song. Okay. Because I'm a big fan of the Lighthouse family. No, can you see we're kindred spirits? You know, we just vibe together like that. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. And uh, in terms of practice, <laughs> how long do you take to put a uh, piece up together? Like this one, um, uh, Stand. How, how long did it take you to put it uh, together? Well, this one, it, it took, uh, I could say, a few weeks. It varies from song to song. You know what happens is you get inspired and sometimes it's like a window opens. And in that moment, you're inspired and the ideas flow. Then the window closes. Then after that, there comes the craft. The craft is now you taking that kernel or that seed and trying to polish it and allow it to grow into a song. And it depends on the particular song. Some songs, I'm able to nail them in two days and I've managed to come up with a complete song. Some songs take time. I might feel the verse and the chorus don't blend together well. I might feel it's missing a bridge or the chorus is not quite right, the hook is not quite memorable. So it varies. But with this particular one, it actually took me a very short time. I, I would say within one and a half to two weeks, I had gotten most of the song together. It was just an issue of practicing it until I could execute the passages on the guitar and on the vocal. What do you want to do with your music? What I want to do with my music is I want to market it and let it spread into Zimbabwe, into the region, into the world. I want to bring something different to the table because I feel like um, a lot of the time we tend to just copy what's trending because, you know, that's what's hot at the moment. But I think that music has always been about self-expression, it's always about showing who you are as an artist and as an individual, and then finding the people who can appreciate what you do. So that is what I'd hope to bring, is to bring something new and different, uniquely African and proudly so, but not even African in the traditional sense, meaning we all have to sound like Tuku, or we all have to find, sound like Salif. Those guys all brought something different when they started music. They brought their own sound, their own signature. And I think it's important to continue that tradition. Just as Western music has evolved from classical music to rock to pop to whatever it is now, I feel that African music also is evolving. I can't tell me I'm falling in love with the Ok, 
Okay, uh, I am not related to Quantum Fana or to Luin Fana, but they are people I respect very much. Oh, okay. Alright, nice. Um, I'm classic and reluctant to the classic bit, so it's allowing the player to chill and not keep on the game. Thanks, Teach, how are you doing, best Mike? What do you think of uh, uh, Young? Uh, in dance music. Also, I'm sure that in the Bushel. Good morning to you. How are you doing? Also enjoying the show this morning. Very, very mature music. Um, I love it. Um, let's just play the last piece uh, this morning called Dancing With You. Dancing With Who? Me? <laughs> Who are you dancing with? Yeah. Okay, this one was inspired by a moment when, um, you know, I'm a person who loves to dance. I love to let my hair down and have fun. And um, there's always that one person who you dance with, even though you don't know each other well, but there's this chemistry that happens. It's as if your spirits maybe knew each other before, and you move together in a sinuous way as one, as one unit, even though you don't know each other, but it's something instinctive. So this was my attempt to capture this using music. Mm -hmm. And it's a chance to for the listeners to hear my instrumental side as a musician. Who did your background vocals? For this song? No, yes. Oh, for, for the other songs that we heard. Uh, not Tando Mflanga, my beloved sister. She did the stellar vocals, which we heard on the other songs. Tell me something. When you are putting together music, um, do you ever argue? Do you argue with your sister? Or with your father? Oh yes, <laughs> very much. Uh, as in Flangos, we're very headstrong people. So <laughs> we, we, we do have a lot of arguments. We all have our own visions for what music should be. But at the end of the day, we always manage to find uh, yeah. to find each other and things go very well. Yes. Yeah, they, they tend to wake up very well. Uh, Tinder, let me play the last piece. Dancing. Uh, it's a bit of a jewel sample there in that uh, lovely piece. Uh, Tinda, <laughs> nice one. I love it. It's different. Uh, thank you so much for coming through this uh, great morning. It's a lovely Saturday. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Your, your social uh, the same media handles? Okay. My social media handles are reachable on WhatsApp on 0772 556 040. On Facebook, you can like my Facebook page and check it out. The name for the Facebook page is uh, facebook.com forward slash capital T-I-J-M-7. That's for Tendai Isaac Joshua Mflanger, T-I-J-M-7. So I'm available there. On Twitter, I'm also reachable. Tendai Mflanger 3. Tendai capital T, Mflanger capital M and 3. And those are my social media handles. For those who prefer to get in touch with me via email, uh, T I J M L A at gmail.com. Thank All right. you. Uh, thanks a lot, Tindai, for coming through this morning. Sarah Sadomba, uh, so you're saying hi, Carl. Tindai, I'm in love with Tindai's music. It is music of uh, the mature in mind, indeed, so soothing. And uh, let's see the other message coming through as well this great morning. Uh, also from the trees, that's what we call music. He is a genius. Oh, really? Did you mean? Uh, wow. Did you mean uh, me, the twins, or tonight? <laughs> oh, it's gonna be tonight. Right, thanks. <laughs> thanks, guys, for uh, for the messages coming through. Keep them coming through this morning. Uh, this is tears for fears. Thanks to Tadai for coming through as well this morning. Thank you, Carlton.